Okay, so uh, hello everyone, good morning. Uh, um, so, uh, okay, I will continue with uh, the, 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 the lecture. Can I start, uh, Majestu? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear, we can hear you. Yeah, very clearly, yes, yes, please. Okay, okay, yes. okay. get started, yes. Uh, okay, so uh, yesterday I started to talk about uh, the geometry of uh, tropical uh, fans. So maybe I can uh, quickly go through uh, the things uh, which were discussed uh, yesterday. Uh, okay, so it was about uh, the geometry of tropical fan folds. Uh, it, um, so I defined a, a set of uh, operations that you can define on uh, on fans and fan folds. The first one was uh, the product. The second one was the star subdivision, which was consisting of uh, changing uh, the, 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 the subdivision of uh, the fan fold uh, into cones by adding a new ray and then uh, further subdividing. Uh, then I defined, uh, I explained how to associate uh, to, uh, to, to a function. Uh, first of all, I defined the concept of divisors in, in, uh, on tropical fans. Um, and then I explained uh, how you can associate uh, two functions which are convex integral uh, linear, um, uh, a divisor. That those divisors, we call them uh, principal divisors. And I say that um, for many uh, tropical fans, actually any divisor that you have on the fan is uh, coming from this construction. And using uh, the this using uh, the to the principal divisors, we defined uh, a, a fundamental cons construction which is called tropical modification. And the tropical modification, you start with the tropical fan fold, uh, and then you have a fan structure. You take a function; it has a divisor. Uh, and uh, you then you define, uh, if you first take the graph of the function, it's not, it gives you something which is uh, homeomorphic to the, to the fan fold you started with, but it is not balanced. And then you just add some cones, uh, which are which by taking the, the, the cones, which are in the support of the divisor and uh, taking the product of those cones with the R plus. So you go one dimension up because you're taking the graph and then you modify uh, the support of the tropical fan by adding these uh, cones, uh, and these new cones. So you change uh, the support, but you get, and you get something which is still tropical. And then with these, these, for these, these, uh, these operations allow to define a notion of uh, shellability for tropical fans by saying that the tropical fan is shellable if it can be obtained from uh, this, by these operations from something very, very simple, which is just uh, the line. Okay, the line uh, with it, it's, uh, it's a unique uh, fan structure. And uh, it, so we, in order to get something uh, meaningful, you have to allow to take the inverse of the star subdivision. Uh, and uh, we also ask uh, the center of the modification, which is a divisor of the function, which has one dimension less to be shellable. Okay. Uh, so these are the two uh, requirements. And then you get a lot of uh, tropical fans uh, by just using these operations as the, the, the basic operations. Uh, so uh, to give to to explain why these are we get a lot of uh, tropical fans in this way. Uh, we, so there there were there were several examples. The first example are complete fans. It means that the fans which have full support in R n, all these uh, fans are shellable. And uh, for if you start with the metroid, then you take the Bergman fan of the metroid. It is a uh, it is a shellable, and every uh, fan that has the same support as uh, the Bergman fan. So it has any fan structure you put on the Bergman fan fold is still a shellable. And I explained that uh, the, you can actually construct a shellable tropical fans which are not associated to Metroid. So this concept of shellability introduce a strictly larger class of uh, fans that just those associated to Metroid. 
And uh, the meta theorem that I will that we are going to uh, to 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 see today is that uh, many properties of tropical fans are shellable. And this means that the property, you say that the property of a tropical fan is shellable if it is stable under the, all the constructions, uh, all, the, all these basic constructions uh, which, uh, which we explained, in the sense that if you start, for example, with, uh, with the two tropical fans which verify that property, then the product also verifies that property. If you have a tropical fan which verifies that property, then the star subdivision of this tropical fan also verifies that property. If you have if you have a tropical fan which verifies the property and you have a center of uh, the, some tropical modification which verifies that property, then the tropical modification verifies that property. So you can make a sense for the shellability of properties of tropical fans. I define the shellable tropical fans. You can also make a sense to properties of uh, tropical fans which are themselves shellable. And the metal theorem states that many properties of uh, you can define for naturally for tropical fans are shellable, and the direct consequence consequence of this is that uh, any shellable tropical fan verify that property. Yeah, because uh, if you have a property which is stable under these basic operations, and you know that the tropical fan is shellable, then you know that that, that tropical fan can be constructed from just the the, the, the fan on the line by these basic operations. So you just need to, to verify that property for the, for the line. Then you get it for free uh, by using the stability of that property under these operations that any shareable tropical fan also verifies that uh, property. So this is something uh, quite powerful. It allows you to prove uh, deep, uh, deep theorems by just uh, bringing the theorem to, to just the line. Of course, you have to prove that uh, uh, that property is stable under these uh, these operations, and sometimes uh, you have to do uh, some uh, work to do this. I mean, so you, you you bring somehow the difficulty of the the, the theorems uh, in proving that uh, the, the the corresponding property is stable under these operations. And sometimes it's it, 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 it is a bit difficult to do this, but uh, fundamentally it's much easier because you have this structure. This there's there's a guiding paths, which allows you to prove the theorems. And uh, so uh, this is a general meta theorem. It is general, so you don't see uh, that much uh, what, are kind of, what kind of properties uh, you're talking about. So let me just uh, start uh, the lecture today by giving some examples of uh, the, the properties uh, you can imagine. And we will see that actually you can prove a lot of things uh, by using this concept of shareability. OK, so let me start. Okay, so I'm going to uh, to associate to any tropical fan uh, a uh, a ring, which is uh, called the, the char ring of uh, the tropical fan. Uh, this is a graded ring, uh, which has uh, which is it is graded ring. Okay, so it is given by some generators and some relations, and it verifies a, a sort of a nice properties which are uh, coming from geometry. Okay, so I give, I give you first uh, the, the definition of the char ring, and I explain uh, pro um, briefly why uh, these properties are natural. And then uh, in later on, we will see also that uh, these, uh, this char ring is also related to some uh, more, uh, uh, to some, uh, to maybe some more uh, talking uh, concepts uh, that to, other group, other groups that you can associate, other uh, other algebraic structures you can associate it to, to, to tropical varieties. Okay, so uh, what is uh, the char ring of a tropical fan? We start with the sigma. Sigma is a tropical fan in R n, and d is the dimension of sigma. So the definition of uh, the char ring is as follows. Uh, first of all, you look at the set of rays of uh, sigma. So this is your sigma. This is your fan. Maybe it has um, center here. Okay, and so on. So this is this is your fan. You look at the set of uh, rays of the fan. So these are the cones which have dimension one. Uh, 
And first, first of all, you consider the polynomial ring, which is generated by uh, these rays. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that to any ray rho, you associate a variable x rho. And then you just take, uh, so you have finitely many rays, so you get finitely many variables. And then you just uh, take uh, the polynomial ring with, uh, uh, with coefficients in Z generated by these uh, variables. So any element here is a, is, a, is a linear combination of monomials, and these monomials are products of X rows uh, for rho array of uh, sigma. So if you have N, N rays, then this is a polynomial ring uh, in N variables. So for now, this is huge. And then you just put a set of uh, a, a set of relations which are naturally coming from the combinatorics of uh, first from the combinatorics of the fan, and also from the geometry of fan. How the fan is uh, embedded inside RN. Okay, so then there are there will be two sets of relations that you put. So first of all, this is you define this ideal I. So this is the ideal generated by the monomials of the form uh, product. So if you take a uh, products of ray, x, the variables associated to rays, indexed by some subset A. So this set, subset A is a subset of uh, the set of rays. And uh, the requirement is that uh, these rays do not form a cone inside sigma. Okay. So for example, in the, in the example here, if you take uh, the ray rho here and you take uh, the, another ray zeta here, you see that rho and zeta do not form any uh, cone together. They, they are not uh, the cones, they are not part of uh, a two dimensional cone. So you here you require that uh, x rho times uh, x zeta is inside the eye. And later on, so these ideals will be exactly the ideal of relations. So it means that you ask that uh, x, zeta, x zeta times x rho should be equal to zero. You ask the product to be zero, okay? If two rays do not form a cone, the product, the product is zero. If uh, three rays, rho, zeta, and uh, uh, two do not form a cone, then the product x rho times x zeta times x two is also zero. So here, for example, you have rho, you have, uh, let's say you have, uh, uh, let's, let's say zeta is here. Rho and zeta form a cone, but rho, zeta, and tau do not form a cone together. So you ask x rho times x zeta times x tau to be equal to zero. If tau was here, okay, you see that uh, rho, zeta, and tau, uh, they form, uh, rho and zeta form a cone, rho and tau form a cone. But the three of them together do not form a cone, so you ask the product to be zero, the, the, the triple product to be zero. So this, this ideal i is generated by, uh, by the products of these, uh, these variables indexed by the rays in living in some, some subset, and you ask those rays to not generate a cone. So you see that this is completely combinatorial. It is given by the structure of uh, uh, rays forming a cone or not inside uh, the inside sigma. So you don't you don't you don't need to know how what are these cones exactly. So you just need to know what is this this this, this rays uh, how they generate a cone or not. This is completely combinatorial. So the second uh, set of relations. Remember that actually you have a cone structure. So you have you have a fan. So it, it is, uh, these these are not just. Uh, this is not something completely combinatorial. So it is something, these are cones actually, which are living inside some uh, Rn. And, uh, and also this is something quite simple. It just remembers the linear structure of the, the space. So this ideal J, this is the second set of relations you put. This is generated by linear forms. What does it mean? It means that, uh, so you are living inside Rn, sigma is inside Rn. is a rational fan inside Rn. So in Rn, you have a Zn. So now you look at uh, linear forms. 
which are taking integer values on ZN. So these are all linear forms. Uh, so you get another ZN. So it's ZN dual. So it's set, the, the, the set of linear maps from ZN to Z. And for all, any of these linear maps, you just take, a, you evaluate the linear map on the, the primitive vector of the array, E rho. And this, you put it as a coefficient of X rho. You take the linear combination in this way and you ask this to be inside the idea. Okay, so basically you're asking this linear form to define a, a linear a linear relation between the variables x rho. And the char ring of sigma is uh, the, the ring you obtain by uh, putting all these uh, relations to be equal to zero. All these, uh, the product of these, uh, these variables for the first relations, if they don't form a cone, to be zero. And also uh, this uh, this linear uh, this li linear combinations of variables to be zero. So we take the quotient of uh, the polynomial ring generated by uh, the race by the ideal i plus j. Uh, Omid, but the when for the ideal j won't the ideal when the, won't, won't the variables themselves be there in the ideal? So. Uh, so let me. So the, you mean the variable themselves, just the just the, just x row, for example, one x row. Yeah. Uh, Why not? There's a linear form. Uh, no, because because maybe I mean if you take a linear form. Uh, okay, so okay, so let's let's see an example here. Okay, you uh -huh. will see that uh, it's not possible that uh, just if okay because I mean so you take a linear form. Right? I think you are thinking of a linear form which has, for example, which is one on a given ray. Okay. One on line, yeah, on a given ray. Oh, there will be some really, yeah, exactly. okay. Be, there will be some other rays which will be uh, which, on which also be non zero. Oh, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, for example, in this uh, example, okay, so let's see what is this is the basic example and it gives you a so let's see what is what is going on here. On, on this example, what is this? This is the this is the two, two dimensional uh, fan which has a complete support. It has three rays and uh, three uh, two-dimensional cones. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, the so let's say uh, we, we call uh, the, the variables x1. So the variable x row one to simplify, we, I call it x1. The variable x row two, we call it x2. And this is x3. Uh, okay, so these are the, so the, you, you start with the polynomial ring in three variables, x1, x2, and x3. And uh, you so what are so let let's look at the first uh, set of relations generated in I. So this x one form a form a ray. So there is no relation. Just x one is not a relation. Yeah. One and two form a cone. They, it's not a relation. But the three of them do not form a cone. So you ask x one, x two, x three should be equal to zero. This is the first relation. Yeah. yeah? And the second relation, you have to take a linear form. Okay, so uh, this is this vector is the vector uh, the vector uh, one zero, and this vector is the vector zero one. Oh, okay. You're in three dimensions. Oh, okay, or oh, two dimensions. Okay. Two dimension, and this is this vector is the vector minus one. Right. Minus, minus one. one. Okay. So now you, you have uh, the linear form which uh, sends uh, one zero to one and zero one to uh, zero. So this is the dual. Uh, so you have the you, you take a base. The base is one zero zero one of uh, R two. So to have the projection to the to the first coordinate, this is a linear form. So this this should define uh, a linear equation among x one x two x three. So you have a, you have to evaluate this linear form on vector one zero. You get one. So this will be the quotient of x1. So it will be 1 x1. So this the projection to the first coordinate is 0 on 0, 1. So 0 times x2 is 0. And then uh, the, 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 on, the last, on the last variable, you take the projection on the first coordinate is minus 1. It gives you a minus x3. So we have uh, the, the equation x1 minus x3 equals 0. So similarly, you get uh, x2 minus x3 equal to zero by looking at uh, the projection to the second coordinate. So now you have these three equations. These are all the equations you can get, okay? Because you, you, the space of linear forms is two dimensional. So you already put uh, these two, uh, two, two equations. 
and this is the only uh, monomial equations you get uh, from the first uh, from the first uh, the first set of relations. Well, this is already huge because it tells you that x one is equal to x three. Yeah. X two is equal to x three. So basically, x one, x two, x three are all the same. And the first one tells you that x one times x one times x one should be zero. Yeah. So it means that x one cube is zero. Okay. So it means that this polynomial ring, when you take the quotient, you get exactly z plus z x one plus z x one squared, and everything afterwards will be zero. X one cube is zero. X one over four is zero, and everything else comes. So if you get just uh, three copies of z, uh, which are uh, which are which are formed like this. Okay, so in other words, uh, the charring of uh, this uh, this fan uh, is very simple. Actually, it has just uh, one copy of z uh, in each degree. Okay, so I think maybe this example makes uh, make made the the definition more uh, more transparent. And uh, so since, uh, so the first observation is that uh, the set of, you start with the polynomial ring, the polynomial ring is uh, graded by the degree of the monomials. And the set, every relation you put was also uh, hom homogene. Every, so, the, so the first relation was just the monomials. You were know, putting some of the monomials to be equal to zero. And the second one was just uh, linear. Linear, linear relation, which is a relation of the, it was a polynomial of degree one. So the first observation is that this ring is a graded mm -hmm. ring. So basically you can write uh, the char ring of sigma as the, first, the part which is uh, degree zero, the part which consists of degree one elements, degree two elements and so on. So this is, uh, this, this gives you a gradient. And of course, it's a ring. You can take the product of elements. If you take a product of an element which is in AK and an element which is in an A, the product will be in A, K plus A. Yeah, because uh, you have to remember that these are uh, still uh, the, 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 the polynomials which survive. So the degree is additive. The product of the, if you take the product of two polynomials, the, the degree of the product is the sum of the degrees. Okay, so these are the basic properties of this uh, charring. Uh, the first, maybe the first one is uh, this one, the first observation, which is completely trivial. There is no relation uh, between uh, the constants. So the, the A0 is just that because, a, because in, yeah, you have the constant inside the polynomial ring and you're you don't not killing this. So A0, the gris report is that. Uh, the other ones are maybe more uh, tricky, so it's not they are not completely trivial. So, so the second one you, you will prove you can prove it by uh, you can there are some elementary proofs. You can, so the, the second one, the second property is that this a, a k sigma. Also, you have uh, you're working inside this polynomial ring, and you have uh, monomials which have uh, higher powers in one variable. For example, x one squared times x two times x three and and so on. If you look at the AK sigma, it is generated by a square three monomials. Okay, it means that uh, it means that basically any any surviving uh, polynomial in this ring has a has a has a representative which is a square three. You can write it as a linear combination of a square three uh, monomials. Uh -huh. So since uh, it's, you're writing this as a, as, a, as a sum of a square three monomials, it means that it's just of the form x, every monomial which, which you use, you use uh, is of the form x row one, x row two, and x uh, row k. And of course, this row one, row two, and row k should form a cone because otherwise, by the first relation, the product would be zero, okay? So it means that basically, uh, you know that uh, to, if you associate to any cone in your in your uh, fan, the product of uh, the x rows for the rows for the rays of the fan, then uh, these these monomials uh, generate uh, the full uh, charring. Okay, so this is this s square freeness, which is a fundamental property. If you have this property and the dimension is d, then you cannot get uh, monomials which are square free and which has the which have degree bigger than d. Okay, so this property implies that uh, a k of sigma is zero, 
as soon as k is bigger than or equal to d plus one, the dimension, because the maximum dimensional cone maximum that, that you see is d-dimensional. It, it, we are supposing that it has the, so the, 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 the fan is simplicial, so it has exactly d rays. So you cannot have uh, more than uh, d, uh, product of more than d rays because of this core freeness. So this implies that uh, basically, uh, if you if you the the, the the fan sigma is uh, d dimensional, you just get the a zero plus uh, a one, and you can go up to uh, the dimension. So in the previous example, we saw that uh, we had uh, something fan which was two dimensional, and starting from the the de degree three, everything was trivial. The, 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 And the last property, uh, I mean, which, which induces this uh, pairing is the degree map. So there is a degree map, which is defined on the last piece from here. So we saw that this is a core, this is Z, yeah? This, this property, but also you have a map from AD to Z. And this is, this we call it the degree map. And this degree map is defined as follows. Uh, it's a map from AD of sigma to Z, so you know that the, the AD of sigma is generated by a square free monomials. And so these are just uh, d-dimensional cones. So the product of X rows for rows forming a d-dimensional cone. You define the degree map by sending any linear combination of this form for sigma d-dimensional cone, top dimensional cone. Uh, to one, so you, you you send this 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 product to one, so you just take the sum of the coefficients uh, a sigma, and this defines the degree map. So this the, the, the well definedness is not so clear, no. Exactly. So you have to prove that this is well defined. Okay. Yeah. And uh, as soon as you have the degree map, you can define uh, the pairing. This pairing. So you take uh, the k piece of your Charring, you take uh, the d minus k piece of the charring, you take two elements, you take the product, you, you arrive in degree d, and now you have a map from degree d to z. So you just go to z. So this it defines it, this pairing between the k piece of the charring and the d minus k of the charring with the values in z. Okay. Okay, so just uh, just uh, maybe comment that the charring is completely natural because it's the charring of some algebraic variety and that algebraic variety is the toric variety you can associate to uh, P sigma. So if you are working with uh, complex coefficients, it's just a complex algebraic variety uh, associated to this fact. And the point is that uh, this, this algebraic variety is not uh, compact, so it's not, uh, it's, 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 uh, yeah, so it, it is not, it, in general, it is not compact. It is compact exactly when uh, sigma has full support in RN. Mm -hmm. Example, in the case of the previous example that I gave, which was this fan, this is the fan of the, pro the projective plane. So for this fan, you have, uh, this is just uh, P2. And the calculation we did was, was the calculation of the charring of P2. And the charring of P2 is generated by just, uh, by, just the, by the class associated to the line. Okay. So it was natural to get a Z, a Z uh, for the line, a copy of Z for the line, and a copy of uh, Z for P2. Okay. But uh, so this is, this is fundamental that in general, uh, as we saw, the tropical fans are not always, uh, they don't have full support. So it's this P sigma is not compact. So the properties I'm just going to list now might look surprising because they, they concern the charring of some, some, uh, some fans, which are not, uh, which do not give, uh, I mean, so, some so charrings of some uh, varieties associated to fans, so that those varieties are not compact. And they still verify the properties of uh, compact uh, varieties. But uh, everything I defined was completely polyhedral. Yeah, so it's, uh, you don't need to, to use uh, the ge geometry. And actually, if you use the geometry, you don't get uh, this far. So you really, you really need to, 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 use, to do combinatorics. It doesn't come. Every, the, the results I'm going to just present now are not coming from algebraic geometry.
Okay, so these are the theorems. So here you assume that uh, sigma is shellable. Okay, and these are these are the properties uh, in the meta theorem. The first property is that uh, you have this pairing which gives you which which goes which gives a pairing between the k piece and d minus k piece. You assume that sigma is assume that the sigma is shellable. Then the first property is a uh, is the, the analog of Poincare duality in this setting. So it tells you that uh, this pairing is perfect. What does it mean? It means that uh, if you have an element A here, such that A times B is not going to zero in this pairing for any B, then this implies that A is zero. And the, the same thing on the other side. If you have a B such that for any A, A, B is going to zero, then B is zero. So it's perfect. It puts in duality the K piece and the D minus K piece. And this duality is defined with Z coefficients. So there is no torsion. So this is the, for the first property that uh, you, you get in this setting. And the second, uh, the second property is uh, the full set of properties that you expect uh, if if you have if you if you were in algebra geometry and you were working with compact uh, compact smooth compact uh, uh, algebraic varieties. Okay, so this is these are these uh, Hodge theoretic results. So for this, you need to assume that sigma is convex. Okay. So I give the definition in a minute, but assume for now that you know what is convex, what convex means. And that what convex means uh, is that uh, you should have a function L, which is defined uh, from the fan fold defined by sigma to R, and which is conwise integral linear and the fundamental property that this is convex. I will define, I will tell you what convex means in this setting, but if you have a conwise integral linear function on y, then you can associate with this uh, function an element omega, which is of time obtained in this form, which is of, of the form L e uh, rho x rho. So this is the evaluation of the, the function on the primitive vector of rho, we have the rho, and this is the, you put it as the coefficient of the variable given by rho, x rho. So this will be, this is a linear, this is, this is generated by x rho, so it's, a, it's an element of a1. And so you are, so we recall that uh, for any linear form on sigma, we know that this combination is uh, zero, but here we are asking this is convex and actually, so this convex here means, uh, say strictly convex. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. And it means that uh, in this case, so you don't get some, I mean, you don't get zero. So there's one consequence that you don't get something zero. Okay, this is not a relation, okay. Uh, so this is the this is the convexity tells you that there is a strictly convex uh, function which is defined on y and you, you, you do this one you associate the corresponding uh, omega uh, to of the corresponding uh, element of a1 and then you have these nice properties the first one is called the hard left sheds property and it so in the complex in the complex algebraic setting it was proved by uh, left sheds it tells you that, that uh, if you know that a k sigma and a d minus k sigma are in duality by Poincare duality, but actually the hard left theorem tells you that once you know, once you have uh, this element, this left shed element, this element is called the left shed element, you can actually go, you can get a bijection, you can get an isomorphism between a k and a d minus k by taking multiplication by the right power of uh, this element. So this is an element of uh, degree one. If you take uh, power d minus 2k, you get an element of uh, degree d minus 2k. So if you start with an element which has degree k, you take the product of omega d minus 2k and a, you get uh, an element of degree d minus 2k plus k, which is d minus k. And the theorem tells you that this is an isomorphism. The last property is uh, the, the this is called Hodge Riemann uh, relation or Hodge index theorem. So again, this is uh, the name is coming from geometry. It was proved by Hodge. Uh, and it tells you uh, it, 
for complex uh, manifold, it, 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 it tells you the following. It gives you the signature of uh, the pairing that you have uh, defined on, uh, because you know that AK is isomorphic to AD minus K by heart of head theorem. So the pairing between AK and AD minus K using this isomorphism, you can see it as a pairing between AK and AK. So the Hodge index theorem gives you, tells, it tells you what is the signature of this uh, pairing. So the number of positive uh, eigenvalues and the number of negative eigenvalues. More precisely, it tells you the following. Uh, you, you define the primitive part. Okay, so this is called the primitive part. Primitive part of the Chari PK as the kernel of uh, AK sigma to AD minus K plus one sigma. Okay, so you just, instead of going from AK to AD minus K, you go to AD minus K plus one by putting another, you take, uh, you take another product with uh, omega. The Hodge-Riemann relation, it tells the Hodge-Riemann theorem, the property tells you that the, if you look at uh, the, the induced pairing on PK, so PK is inside AK, which is defined by sending AB to a uh, degree of uh, AB times omega D minus 2K, and you multiply this pairing by minus one power K, then you get a pairing which is positive definite. Okay. So uh, you can, I mean, so you can, uh, you can check that once you know that this is positive to finite, then you can use, uh, um, you can use the decomposition of AK. And, okay, so maybe I have to tell you that uh, once you have the hard depth sheets theorem, you can prove that uh, AK, you can decompose it as PK plus omega times PK minus one plus omega squared p k minus two. So basically, once you know the primitive elements, you get, you get the decomposition of uh, AK into sum of uh, the primitive element part of K plus the primitive part of K minus one multiplied by omega and so on. So you get the decomposition like this. And the hodge riemann relations tell you that uh, if you take uh, the pairing induced on each of these pieces, that pairing will be uh, definite, and it will change. Uh, the, it will become positive, negative, positive, negative when you go from uh, pieces to to, 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 the, to the next from one piece to the next one. So that's why you introduce this uh, this sign minus one power k. It tells you that uh, this is the, if when you multiply the pairing by minus one power k, it is positive here then it become negative here and then becomes positive and so on. So it gives you, of course, the signature as soon as you know the dimension of these PKs here, yeah. Uh, so a quick clarification. So everywhere this dot is the, the degree, right? Which dot? What this one? Mean? Exactly. So this per dot, you have to go to the degree. So this, this, this when you put the dot, of course, you arrive in AD, but as I said, uh, maybe I didn't say. Yeah, okay, so I'm sorry. Yeah, one consequence of uh, this, uh, the, the duality here is that AD is isomorphic to Z. Yeah, because if you put K equal to zero, then you have, this is Z. So it tells you that Z times AD to Z is perfect. So it means that AD is isomorphic to Z. So when you take the product, you arrive in AD, and then AD is equal to Z. So you just take uh, the, or maybe I mean otherwise you just go from AD to Z by using the degree. But I just I I, I just uh, I didn't you I don't use anymore the degree here. When you take the product, you can use it. You can say that okay, so you're already in Z. So just uh, you do it as an as a number. Uh, here I put the degree, but okay. So these are the set of all. Uh, uh, Hodge theoretic uh, uh, properties that you get uh, on this charring, assuming that uh, the charring is uh, is shellable. Okay, so how do you prove this? 
Okay, so now that we have this uh, shellability property, actually you can prove it. Uh, you can prove it uh, in somehow very structured way, conceptual way, and the the, the proof uh, goes as follows. You just verify that those properties for the line, all the properties which were listed, you prove it for the line, and then you prove that all each of the properties is stable passes when you go uh, when you use one of the uh, one of the operations, one of the basic operations. That, uh, that, uh, that I introduced at the beginning of the lecture. Okay, so this is almost complete, but I didn't tell you what is what convexity means, yeah? So this gives you the proof. I mean, of course, uh, you have to do something. Uh, you have to prove that uh, those properties are preserved when you, when you do this. So the essential thing is maybe this tropical modification. In the tropical modification, you, know, you basically show that when you go from uh, tropical fan you do it to the tropical modification, then the char ring is preserved. So since you you, you had uh, the the structure, you have to have the properties for the for the fan itself. Then you go to, when you go to the tropical modification, you get the same ring, so it doesn't change. And then you have to prove that uh, you can go from uh, then you can you have, you have to show that the, the properties are stable on the, the star subdivision of the products and so on. So. So the last thing I have to tell you is uh, the you can omit there is yes there's a question so yeah. is this uh, give some uh, generalization of uh, the results known for projective toric varieties absolutely so it tells you that uh, it tells you that uh, exactly so I mean the projective toric varieties you know that, that, that this comes from uh, from uh, toric geometry. Now it tells you that if you have a toric variety which is defined uh, by a fan which is not complete but uh, it's uh, it is tropical and it is shellable, then uh, then all the properties of uh, uh, projective tor toric varieties uh, are still uh, are still hold uh, still hold for these uh, these toric varieties. So it, it tells you that you don't need actually the to the, the toric variety to be uh, to be complete. To be compact, so some property, yeah, these all the properties of compact uh, toric, smooth compact uh, toric varieties. I mean, in the case you want to have for Dreamon, it should be projected, are are, are also hold uh, for uh, in this more general con context of when you have fans which are not compact, for which are not complete. Okay, so uh, I didn't uh, tell you what convexity means. So let me just uh, tell you this, and then. Uh, and then we, we will see some applications of uh, the results and some connection to already uh, to already known uh, theorems. Uh, okay, so what is the convexity here? Uh, so you you take you're taking L is a is a so you, let's say you have a fan. Okay, it can be in any dimension. See here, I'm taking the two dimensional fan. You have a function L, which is defined on the support of the fan. This is L, and it goes to R. It takes uh, real values. And uh, it is, uh, it is uh, integral. It is linear on each cone. So if you take a cone here, it is linear on this cone. And it is also linear on the, the, the next cone. But of course, uh, you don't ask L to be uh, globally linear, it's just uh, conwise linear. So you say that L is convex, strictly convex, if every time you fix a cone tau, for example here I'm fixing this uh, cone here. This is my cone, maybe you don't see this. And this cone tau. Every time you fix for any tau, you can find a linear form, linear form, L2, such that L minus L2, L and L2 restricts, uh, give you the same restriction to tau. So L minus L2 is zero, zero on on two. Okay, so it means that basically you take L2 and then you extend it linearly over the full space. 
And uh, the, the convexity means that uh, requires that uh, you, you can find L2 such that if you look at uh, L sigma, now minus this L restricted to sigma, then this is positive, uh, strictly positive in the interior of sigma. And this for any sigma, which is a, uh, which, which contains a tau as a face. This is for uh, any sigma containing tau uh, as a face. So it means that uh, basically you can, by using a linear form, linear forms, which are, which have the same restriction to tau as L tau, by modifying uh, your function L, okay, so, uh, around the tau, you can make uh, the function to be zero on uh, tau and strictly positive uh, on, on everything you see around tau. Is it clear? So if you take, uh, if you, in this example, you have tau here, you have sigma here, you have two, two, uh, two, two, uh, two cones uh, which is strictly contain tau here is sigma and eta. It tells you that uh, you look at uh, your function around tau, then you find a, a linear extension of tau to the full space and you, you change your function by taking L minus uh, this extension. Okay, maybe. Uh, yes. Here it's L tau. Yeah, it's okay. Yes, okay, I think uh, maybe I'm, I'm uh, the notation is not very good. So let's change uh, this to F tau. Okay. So you can find a linear form F2 such that uh, L minus F2 is a zero on two. And such that uh, when you take uh, F2, ah. uh, L restricted to sigma minus F2 restricted to sigma, this is strictly positive. Yeah, you have modif you modify your, your function uh, L by, by, going, by changing F to F minus L and this function is zero on tau and it is a strictly positive on everything which appears uh, around uh, tau. This what is, is tau? Huh, sorry, what is tau? It's tau is dimension one. No, any cone for any cone. Okay. In particular, if you take uh, tau to, the, to, to be zero, it means that uh, there is a linear for function on the full space. Yeah. Such that uh, you can make, uh, you take a, uh, uh, you can you touch that your function basically your function is positive yeah you can you take uh, you, you you change your function by a linear function and then you, you, the function becomes positive on yeah, all codes yeah. okay. right right okay so this is this notion of convexity if the if the fan has uh it has full support you can prove that uh, this this this, function, this notion of convexity is the same as the usual convexity on for functions defined on r n so this is a generalization of the context. So it's a central uh, concept. There are a lot of questions which are still open around uh, this in relation to the geometry of tropical fans. So it's a, it's a, it's a concept which, uh, which uh, deserves a further study somehow. So. Mm. But uh, for this proper, for this, yeah, for this, for you, this, this is the, some positivity property and this defines you this uh, Lefschetz elements, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, these elements of A1, which give you this uh, hard Lefschetz property and the uh, Riemann relation. Okay, so, uh, okay, the proof, I, I mean, the proof I didn't give you all the details, but uh, you see, I mean, how to proceed. So once you have the shadability, you just prove that uh, all the properties are preserved to be any use. Some of the properties are very, they are completely trivial to verify. Some for some other ones, you have to do something, uh, uh, yeah, like uh, for tropical modification, you have to do some calculations to see that the Chalon doesn't change when you do the tropical modification. And once you have this, then you get it for free um, using also some other other <laughs> other uh, calculations to show that the star subdivision also doesn't change. Uh, I mean, it changes the the, the Chalon, but it preserves the the properties. Properties. Yeah. 
Okay, so one corollary, corollary of this uh, theorem is that uh, you get the proof uh, of uh, the, the, all the properties listed for basic fans, like for example, for complete fans. But as, as just what there was a question, for complete fans, you know that the corresponding toric variety is compact. So basically you can get it also from geometry, from the, the, the same properties uh, holding for complex uh, projective uh, uh, varieties. But this gives you somehow a, a combinatorial proof. But actually, maybe more interestingly, you get it for uh, Bergman fans of metroids or anything, any fan which has the same support as the as the Bergman fan of a metroid. And this result was uh, proved uh, by Adi Prasito Katz in 2015. So it it was proved for metroids, and then it was also some generalized uh, uh, by uh, by other people also to the context where you have a. Uh, Instead of having the Bergman fan, you have a Bergman fan which has the same support as uh, the Bergman fan for. So uh, it was done. So the generalization were done at the same time as we did uh, this both on shareability and. Uh, uh, so the, the, to, as I said, the, the, the set of uh, the collection of shareable tropical fans is strictly larger. So basically, you get also you get that this what is really important for all these results is the, the fact that these fans are, can be constructed from basic uh, fans like uh, this projective, this the fan of the line given by the line, by this basic operation. So it puts uh, the, 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 the 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 importance of these operations actually at the heart of this uh, this, this, this this theorems. Okay, so uh, the, what is this corollary? It tells you that the choring of metroids verify all the properties. Uh, I have to explain you the proof because uh, we, we already saw that uh, you can associate uh, to, a, to a metroid uh, a, 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 a fan, which, which we denoted by sigma m. Uh, and the, the first observation is that the definition of the, the choring of the metroid is uh, the same as the choring of the corresponding tropical fan. So it's just a definition. And uh, the second uh, observation is that uh, sigma m is shellable. And the shellability, uh, I didn't prove it, but as I told you that shellability of sigma m is a consequence of the operations of deletion and contraction in Metroids. This gives you the Poincare duality. And then you have to check that sigma m is convex. And sigma m is convex because sigma m belongs uh, to uh, to its, its part is a sub fan of a projective uh, fan which has full support. Okay. Uh, you can you can see this. Uh, yeah, it's not difficult to see. So this, since sigma m is convex, it means that sigma m admits uh, a convex a strictly convex function. So you have the Hodge theory, uh, all all the properties listed previously by using this uh, by using uh, the the, the shellability. So the original proof of the uh, Lucas was uh, different, of course. So the by projective fan, you mean a complete fan? Um, what projective, did I say? Projective fan. Projective fan is a complete fan, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the sigma m is not uh, it's it's not complete, yeah. Sigma m yeah. is not generally complete. Okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> Sigma M convex means that it admits a strictly convex function. So you yes. can do. Yes. Okay. So maybe maybe I explain you why uh, Adi Prasito Hu and Katz uh, prove uh, this uh, the, the, the this corollary that I just uh, uh, explained because uh, this usually this this uh, the, these properties of these whole theoretic properties are related to uh, combinatorics to log concavity phenomena. And in the context of Metroid, uh, the, the low concavity is captured in, the, in, the, in a polynomial, which is called the, the characteristic polynomial of the Metroid. Um, OK, so maybe, maybe I spend a few minutes uh, giving this. And then I think I will be uh, uh, the end of my time. And then we, we will see if it's possible to have a few more minutes. And then I just tell you a little bit of, about the generalization of everything here to more general tropical varieties and so on. Okay, so what is the application? It's called the low concavity. So what is this characteristic uh, polynomial? The characteristic polynomial is defined as follows. It's a polynomial in one variable X, and it is defined uh, using uh, this, uh, this, uh, this expression. So you can, so this expression comes uh, from a definition of uh, the characteristic polynomial using Mobius functions. 
So to any metroid, you can associate its corresponding uh, lattice, its corresponding, which is defined by this process of uh, flats. And you, there's a Mobius function defined on that one. And there's, a, there's an expression of uh, the characteristic polynomial using Mobius function, which is completely handy. It allows you to prove a lot of uh, combinatorial results uh, about uh, this, this, this polynomial. Uh, but the expression is quite simple. It is, uh, you, just, uh, you just take, uh, you define fm of x to be uh, the sum, you take the sum over all uh, subsets A of the ground set E. And this is, a, this, is a, this is an alternating sum. If you take minus one power the, the, the size of A times the monomial X power R minus R A. So R here is uh, the rank of the metroid. And rank of M is uh, just uh, the size of uh, B for any B, for any base, for any B, which is a base of uh, for any D uh, base of the metroid. And what is RA? RA for any subset A, you can define its rank as the maximum, as the size, as the set, as the size of I, uh, maybe max I for I, an independent set, independent. And included in uh, I included in A. So if you have a vector representation of the metroid, it means that it's uh, it's the it's the dimension of the vector space generated by the vectors in A. So for this, you need just to find the maximum independent set of among the vectors. And this expression, uh, this gives this gives you the definition of the, pol the characteristic polynomial. You can write it in this form. The first observation using Mobius function is that actually, so you have another expression as I said using Mobius function is that you, the, the first uh, the first observation is that the sums the, the signs of these uh, these coefficients will be alternating, so you get uh, this a zero a one a r are positive. So one example of a metroid is given by uh, graphs. So these are called graphic metroids, and in the case of graphs, the bases are spanning trees. Okay, so the edges of the spanning trees. And uh, you, you can prove that uh, spanning trees, uh, if you look at the spanning trees, what is a spanning tree? It's a subgraph of the, the graph, which, which has maximum number of edges. If you can have the graph, it's a, it's a tree, which, which has uh, the maximum number of uh, edges, spanning tree. So if you have size n, uh, it's a tree in the graph, which has uh, exactly n minus one edges. And in this case, in the case of graphs, uh, this characteristic polynomial is uh, the chromatic polynomial, which counts uh, the number of colorings uh, using uh, k colors. So it is, uh, it is some, uh, so for graphs, it's, you see it as a, as a, counting, as a counting function for proper colorings of vertices. So the, the properties, the, these this whole theoretic properties were used by Adipazito Katz to prove that uh, this sequence of uh, coefficients is log concave. And that means that uh, if you take uh, three consecutive uh, coefficients, then you have this inequality among them, which tells you that AI times AI plus two or is smaller than or equal to AI plus one squared. So if you take minus log, then you, you get the usual uh, convexity. Uh, okay, so how do you prove this? Maybe I give you uh, just uh, uh, the, the general idea. Using the Hodge theoretic properties, uh, you just need to bring uh, the, the, the proof to some uh, observations about uh, the coefficients to show that these coefficients actually you can calculate it using the charring. Okay. Uh, so what you do is the following. You just, uh, you just observe that uh, this fx, if you put x equal to one, you get zero. Yeah, because uh, because this is a, an alternative alternative uh, sum of minus one power the size of a times x power r minus r a. So if you put x equal to one, you're just taking the alternative sum minus one power the size of a. So you just get one one minus one power the size of the the edge set the the ground set. So you get zero. So you can divide uh, the characteristic polynomial by one minus x, and then you get something as which has one degree less. And uh, it will be enough 
So this is the first observation that to prove the log concavity, you just need uh, to prove it for this uh, this one. This this function is you can you call it uh, the it's called the reduced characteristic polynomial. So the first observation is that the, in order to prove the log concavity here, you you just need uh, to prove it for this one. And the reason is that you have this if you have something which is log concave here, then if you one minus the coefficient of one minus x form also a log concave sequence. So the product of these two will again be log concave. So this is somehow uh, the reasoning behind. Okay, and uh, so the 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 the, the the fundamental uh, observation now, which is uh, which uses uh, the flat, lattice of uh, flats of the metroid, is uh, this observation that actually these uh, these uh, these coefficients bj count count some specific uh, patterns which are which arise in this uh, lattice of uh, lattice of that in this process of flats. Okay, I don't uh, give uh, the, the formal the meaning of this, but it's just it it, it counts uh, some in some increasing pass, which uh, starts from uh, the minimum element in the lattice uh, in this uh, geometric lattice and it goes to the top. Okay, so it's increasing some increasing. If you should have this pass has increasing property, and if you if you write you can and it happens that uh, this 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 the number of these patterns you can calculate it by using use it by doing some algebraic manipulation inside the charring, and this is written in this form that these BJs actually count the degree of an element in the charring of uh, sigma m. So sigma m to e to m you associate uh, sigma m. And you define this uh, charring of n as the charring of sigma n, and it turns out that uh, the coefficients uh, that you have here are calculating actually a product inside uh, this uh, this charring, and this product uh, is uh, associated to these uh, two two elements of a one. This is an element of a one. This is an element of a one. The first element. Is uh, okay. So first of all, you have to observe that sigma m, by definition, the cones in sigma m are associated to flags of uh, flats. So the a cone of dimension one is given by a flat. It's uh, the it's the ray generated by the characteristic function of the flat. So the, the variables are indexed by flats. So the first element alpha, you fix an element of uh, the ground uh, the ground set E of the metroid. Then alpha is the sum of all the variables which contain this element. And then you define beta as the sum of all the elements which do not contain uh, this element. So this gives you two specific elements in A1. And this, this is the fundamental combinator in the equality, which allows you to use, uh, to use properties of the, the Turing in order to prove uh, the concavity. It tells you that in order to, to, cal to, to calculate uh, BJ, you know that BJ counts some patterns in the lattice, and you see that uh, this, this number of this number actually shows up to be uh, the degree of this product inside uh, the charring. The product, you take a J power of alpha times uh, the R minus one minus J power of beta, and then you get an element of A R minus one. And it happens that the dimension of uh, sigma m is exactly r minus one. So if you take the degree and this gives you exactly this pj. The second observation is that this alpha beta or give you convex elements. And now you use a uh, Hodge theory to prove that uh, this, this matrix has a, has, a, has a negative determinant. And the reason for this is that uh, a1, so you are doing calculations in A1, you have, a, you, have, you have a pairing in A1, and you know that A1, you can write it as a P1 plus, uh, plus uh, omega, if you, have, if, you take a, if you take a strictly convex function on, uh, on, uh, on the sigma n, you can write it A1 as P1 plus omega times P0. But P0 is uh, Z, so it's basically P1 plus Z. And the pairing, uh, so the pairing, if you multiply the pairing uh, by minus one on P1, you get something a positive definite. So if you don't multiply, it, the pairing is negative, strictly negative on P1, and it is positive, strictly positive on this set. So because alpha is convex, 
this determinant, you prove that this determinant is just the restriction of the pairing. It's the match matrix of the restriction of the pairing on the two elements alpha, beta generate the subspace of uh, A1 generated by alpha, beta. So this is negative. And this is exactly the log using this property. This is exactly the log concavity for initial terms. So for the first initial terms uh, in, in the among the coefficients. And the general case, you know, you're you're working with a geometric lattice associated to metric. For general case, you just uh, and you know that the BJ counts in increasing fast. So what you do is that you truncate the metric by removing uh, the top uh, the top lines in in the has diagram of the the metroid and then you just uh, you put uh, you put you create a new maximum element so it gives you a truncation and this will be again a geometric lattice it corresponds to a metroid so you can proceed then by induction to prove that uh, oh, for the next initial terms uh, associated to this truncation you also have the log concavity and then you have the result mm -hmm. okay so uh, yeah i just uh, I, I i finished my third lecture at this point is there any question? And then we can see if uh, you, you would like to go a little bit uh, farther or is it okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Let's, yeah. So any any questions at this point? Yes. So, uh, you know, uh, some varieties of this uh, tropical toric varieties may also have nice properties. Um, like projective varieties, but probably one cannot study them by this shallability. So has this problem been looked at or? Uh, you, you mean, you mean uh, to define some, uh, I mean, so what you can do is that if you, if you have a, if you have a sub variety of uh, a, a toric variety, uh, you can take the tropicalization of that variety. If you, I mean, if it is defined over, if it's defined over complex uh, numbers, you get some uh, fan. So if that fan is uh, shellable, then you, you, you would expect that uh, the, the sub variety also has uh, some nice, some, some nice structure given by that, uh, that uh, the shellability of that fan. Otherwise uh, it will be, uh, it, it, had, it, it will have a much more complicated uh, uh, geometry. And it's you cannot use uh, just uh, trop tropical uh, techniques to to study uh, uh, the geometry of uh, general sub varieties of uh, PN, but uh, but uh, you might be able in some cases to mix uh, tropical with complex geometry and reduce uh, the complexity to something which is a hybrid, the hybrid of tropical and complex geometry by 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 yeah, by, by decomposing uh, the complex variety into pieces. But uh, yeah, it's a good question. In general, uh, how far, how much far you can uh, you can go? Uh, but uh, everything I said here was just uh, the case of uh, the, the local case. Okay, so in the global case, uh, you get more complicated, uh, or more complicated uh, uh, picture. And uh, I haven't yet, I mean, I haven't yet put it into context uh, how uh, these, uh, these results were for fans. Uh, and it turns out that uh, this result, you can view it as uh, results about some specific uh, compact uh, tropical varieties. So fans, uh, tropical fans are not compact. So that's, oh. I think, uh, so I think uh, I, am, I haven't yet explained why uh, the, 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 why these results, uh, also it, they might look uh, surprising because they concern the, the geometry of uh, non-compact toric varieties are maybe less uh, surprising if you view them uh, purely inside tropical geometry. <laughs> and the reason is that because uh, they concern the, 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 the geometry of some compact uh, tropical varieties. So uh -huh. if, you, yeah, if, you, if you have some time, I have prepared some few slides, I can tell you more about this, but we'll see later. We will see. Uh, any, any, other, any other questions on at this point? Yeah, so uh, the perfect pairing that you define in terms of degree. Yes. In practice, are there any algorithm to compute uh, the degree? Uh, yes. So, I mean, or, yeah, I see there you can turn, uh, yeah, there is it. So, if you start with, uh, with an expression, so the idea is that uh, you, you know alpha, you know beta, you, you take the product. 
you know the, the terms which appear in the product, but you get a lot of terms which are not a square free. If you had only a square free elements, then uh, then of course you can uh, you can calculate the degree because you know that those square free elements you have to to, to just uh, send them to the coefficient and then just take take the sum of the equations. So now you, the question, then you, your question, you can reduce it to this question: Is it possible to find uh, a square free represent representation? of uh, a general element in AD? Okay. And the answer is yes, because I mean, it's completely effective uh, how, to, if you give me a monomial, which has uh, some a square free, uh, it's not, it is not a square free, so it has more you know, higher exponents, then there is, the way you prove that uh, square freeness is effective in the sense that you fix a lexicographic order on, uh, on variables, and then you, there is a, there's an effective way of, uh, uh, turning this, uh, this, these monomials into, uh, into a square free, uh, sums of square free elements uh, in the Turing, which is what in the Turing. But if you ask, you, are, you ask me what is the complexity of this uh, procedure, uh, I, I, I cannot uh, tell it right now, but uh, it's completely effective for how to turn uh, an expression into uh, a square free expression. So you can turn it into an algorithm, but maybe it takes a lot of time to, to do this. Oh, thank you. So, so you 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 can you can you generalize this uh, um, characteristic polynomial also to these uh, uh, to these fans uh, to to uh, to your shellable uh, to the shellable fans um, and 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 then uh, prove the log concavity similar log log concavity result of the coefficients. Is it meaningful to, to talk of characteristic polynomials? I think this is a good question. Let me just think. Uh, okay, I, I I cannot remember in having thought about uh, this. This I think uh, of course you would like to prove uh, log concavity statements. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, things are uh, related to. As I said, this uh, cone, this uh, geometry of these convex functions that uh, that you can define. Yeah. But uh, but uh, for this uh, for the, to define the characteristic polynomial of a general uh, tropical fan. Yeah. I, I don't I don't uh, remember. I think I haven't thought about this, and uh, I, I cannot remember. Uh, okay. Uh, any anything uh, related to this. But these 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 interpretations that you gave of these coefficients b i they somehow seem to suggest that you can mimic these no in 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 this more general setting and 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 define sort of go backwards and define your characteristic polynomial uh, using this uh, and 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 then maybe using your results it, this may uh, the log concavity may follow similarly it's just a hunch but so sure. so in the case of metroids you are right that there are these these, these, these elements, these alpha, beta, which are yeah. completely, uh, which are very, which is kind of, which are canonical. You just look at the rays, the rays have, uh, are, are associated to uh, some uh, subsets of a given set. So we can just form these elements. That is true. Mm -hmm. But uh, in general, uh, you have the rays, but you don't have, uh, you don't have uh, like a canonical elements showing up. But that is true that if you give me two elements, alpha, beta, which are convex, maybe they are not, uh, Strictly convex, but they're convex. Ah. Uh, then you can form uh, this polynomial. You're right, and then you can you can call it the characteristic polynomial associated with you did with these two elements. And then I think then you get uh, you get a lot of uh, characteristic polynomials because uh, you can take uh, any uh, any convex any pair of convex uh, functions on on the on your fan fold on your fan. Yeah. So yeah. So I. I, yeah, I think, I mean, I don't see uh, a canonical choice in general. Maybe using shell ability, you can reduce it to just uh, to the case. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe for shell ability, tropical fund, there's a way yeah. to associate something. Yeah. So, uh, but the shell ability to... procedure to get, uh, to, get uh, to, to, to produce your fund using this operation is not canonical. So you can, you can also use a different path to get to the same tropical fund. 
So, but uh, but are there uh, examples of combinatorial interest where which 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 where these are needed really this shellable these shellable fans I mean not uh, where this approach I mean this uh, the setting of um, uh, Bergman fans itself don't suffice. Yes. So, so uh, there, there are some constraints. I mean, it's maybe not in the combinatorial setting, for, but in the geometric setting. Okay. Uh, there are some uh, conjectures about the geometry of uh, the generation, I mean, about the generations of uh, complex uh, algebraic varieties. And they concern uh, the, 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 the generations which are called maximal. Uh -huh. uh, and in the maximal setting, you can get the things which are, you can get, uh, yeah, you can, you can, you can get the tropical fans, oh. which are not, uh, which are not coming from uh, metroids and so metroids. like I think to these maximal degenerations uh, and there's there are a lot of uh, I mean there are, there are fundamental questions which are still open about uh, the geometry uh, in the limit and specifically some some statements about uh, which involve uh, studying uh, convex functions on uh, on those tropical fans and uh, shellable tropical fans uh, because the the way they are uh, defined are uh, somehow maybe uh, simpler to study. Uh, I don't have uh, the concrete result to, 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 to give you, okay, so this property, but this is a, there are some specific uh, questions uh, I have been working on with, uh, with Mathieu Picres and yes. uh, which involve uh, using, uh, going above, beyond the, the, the case of metroids and. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Um... Yes, and I'm also, so maybe something else I didn't say is that uh, so you don't need actually for tropical uh, for shellable. So it, so basically, the, I think the fundamental message is that uh, these properties are are preserved by these operations. So somehow, you, you, yeah. So if you start from something which verifies this, then you can produce a lot of other things which verify this. So so it gives you a way actually to to test uh, some specific. Uh, Properties for given fans, which are which, which show up in the tropicalization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I have a couple of questions. One uh, related and one maybe slightly not related. So uh, in the chromatic <coughs> polynomial of the graph, uh, uh, the graphic metroid that you took, finally uh, we, we have using this result, we have proved that the coefficients, the modulus of the coefficients, are log concave, right? So, yeah. uh, but they are also unimodal. Exactly. And that uh, the highest peak that occurs, the subscript I, what is that I there it, where it occurs? Uh, I think it could be, uh, uh, it, could, it could be not in the middle, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, but, uh, but I, I don't uh, put my head on that, so. <laughs> I think I mean it, it. I don't know. I don't know how to. I, I think I. Yeah. It, uh, I don't know how, what where exactly it is. Uh, this. Uh... Okay. And one more question is that uh, these techniques that you, which is used here usually uh, see log concavity is stronger than unimodality, right? So exactly. so these techniques are usually used to prove. A log concavity, right? In but if you just want to prove unimodality, are there similar techniques? With suppose you don't have log concavity, but just unimodality. I see. Uh, so uh, I mean, so one one instance of uh, unimodality is the the case where you have uh, you have a hard left shift theorem. Yeah. If you just have a hard left shift theorem and you don't have a, you don't have a positivity, you don't have Hodge-Riemann, then you can get you can prove a, you can get a, a, you can get unimodular sequences because the consequence of a, okay maybe maybe I can precise this the consequence of a hard left shift theorem is that the dimension of a, this uh, maybe I go back to this. Mm -hmm. The consequence of the hard left shift theorem is that uh, the is that uh, is that if you look at the dimension of uh, if you look at the dimension of a uh, let me see this. if you take the dimension of a zero a one a two you, you know these are the pieces you just look at the dimensions let's say this is you get d zero d one d two and so on. So a consequence of the hard left theorem is that this sequence, the sequence of dimension is a unimodal. 
And the reason is this, uh, this decomposition, because, uh, because you see that AK is PK plus omega times PK minus one, so on. Yeah. So you can write it as, uh, you can write it as a PK plus omega times uh, A K minus one. And since these are, since there's no, there's no zero here after multiplication. So omega PK minus one is, has the same size as PK minus one. You see that at the beginning, you start from A zero, then you go to A one, the dimension increase. Yeah. Then you go to A two, the dimension increase. So this yeah. will be for K equal to up to half the dimension, you get, uh, you go up and then you go down. And there are, so the hard left shed theorem gives you unimodular sequences. So if um, you have a situation you, in which you have hard left shed theorem, you don't have a Hodge Riemann, then you get unimodular, unimodality, but you don't have uh, the, the log concavity. And these situations arise. So for example, uh, Karim Adi Brazito, he has proved uh, uh, and the instance, some instance of uh, uh, hard left shed theorem without having uh, positivity. And those concern uh, homological. Uh, homological uh, manifolds, which come uh, with a sheaf of linear functions. Uh, instead of having them embedded, you, you don't have uh, this, you, you work with combinatorial fans basically, and you just uh, take uh, some linear from some sheaf of linear functions, which are defined on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on cones. And uh, if, it, if your sheaf of linear functions verify some genericity properties, uh, you, you can prove that uh, you have hard left shift theorem still. Hard Lipschitz theorem works there. So then you get unimodular sequence by looking at the dimensions, but you don't have a, you don't have a low concavity because okay. because positivity is not present. Okay, and one more thing: if uh, if we have Hodge Riemann relations, then uh, the dimension of a k and d minus k are equal. So you will have symmetry also. Yeah, Poincaré duality uh, is part of, is, I mean, hard left shed theorem. If you have hard left shed theorem, it, it, you have Poincaré duality. I mean, you have the dimensions, yeah, because it tells you that AK and AD minus K or, uh, yeah. but in the context he considers, uh, you, this is a homology manifold. So which have some, this, so this, in this case, you have the Poincaré duality because, uh, you know, okay. thank you. But I, I don't know, but I don't know any other instances where you can use, uh, you can get, uh, uh, because there are some other unimodular unimodular sequences which arise in combinatorics. You, I don't know if those ones are uh, you can view them as a consequence of some hard left shift property somewhere. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Any yeah. other questions? So maybe. We were just discussing uh, 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 that we'd like to learn the fourth part, but we were just thinking of one possibility is we, we could try to discuss it among ourselves. If you, if you can share the notes. Yeah, I can send it to you. I mean, uh, yeah. Okay. We and can, then we can discuss it. Um, uh, this is already quite something to uh, digest. We'll, we, we, we'll, we'll try to sink into, into our heads for most of us. It's new. So we can try to um, uh, digest this. And in the course of um, in the next few days, try to study the fourth part on, uh, we can, we have, since we are all in one place, we can discuss it, which may, which should make things somewhat. I mean, so the fourth part will be in the case of uh, non-trivial valuations, right? Yes, I mean, the, uh, you, as you as you maybe I can show you at least uh, what is uh, in the lecture. Uh, we don't, we, I don't, we don't go through. But the, the fourth part, I mean, of course, you see that uh, we completely put uh, the algebraic uh, context uh, aside. So you don't. Uh, th these are tropical varieties you get by tropicalization exactly in the non-trivially valued case. But you don't need this. You just uh, need to to work uh, in, in polyhedral geometry. So then, uh, the, the, I mean, the first in the for, in the the remaining uh, part, I wanted to explain how you get uh, these showings as cohomology ring of some uh, canonical compactifications of the fan, and okay. uh, to to state uh, that you can generalize the results so to. Ah, yeah, so, I, mean, I, think, I think there's a problem. Yeah, it's a any, any anybody. Uh, so I will send you the the then I will send you the slides and. Uh, um, 
and then uh, you yeah if there is a question if you you want me to to show up and I have questions I would be happy to find some time during next oh that'll week. be great yeah that'll be great yeah that's that'll be great that we we try to study it on our own and um, and and then when we have questions or difficulties uh, then Omid said he'll be kind enough to give us some time uh, within the ne next week the end of next week uh, to have another session where yeah. we can, uh, it'll be more of a discussion, hopefully. I mean, that we would have. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, sure. It would, that, would be, that would work for you. Yeah, next week. So next Wednesday, for instance, most of the time we are free. In, uh, so we can maybe try that. Oh, that sounds great. Okay. Yeah. So this sounds like a, like a good plan. Most people, most of the audience also seem to be agreeing that we'll try to uh, give, give it a reading and try on our own uh, to what extent we can get to it. And, and then we can get in touch with you. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank I hope, uh, much. I, I hope, uh, yeah, I hope uh, I, I, I might try to, to not go too uh, fast and uh, to take Yeah, no, this was uh, very optimal. Yeah. Uh, we really it enjoyed was, uh, the, the it lectures. Was not, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't uh, be there uh, for, for to, to, to just uh, engage, <laughs> yes. engage also in discussions after the or before. It would have been very meeting. nice, yeah. But no, this was really very, very uh, interesting. We were all engaged. Uh, everybody found, found it very interesting, sure. And um, yeah, the pace and, and, and generally uh, the, the topics were all very uh, accessible and really good combination of, uh, the, of algebraic geometry and combinatorics. So people found it very interesting. So thank you so much. On the online audience, uh, okay. Oh, okay. We don't can have any. One? Yeah. It's a... Yes. One more question. Yes. Uh, so can I ask one more? Uh, off yeah, yes. Yes. So uh, see, you mentioned the Chow group. So uh, are there any result which computes the Chow group of uh, modular space of curves, a genus G curve, possibly with marking? Uh, for, uh, um, uh, so, the, okay. So I think this this is a this is a very good question, uh, and uh, the, the the these these char groups are complicated. So there, I can I think I can give you two answers. First of all, the, the these 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 char groups are complicated, but uh, you you might uh, you might uh, say okay, so maybe you can use tropical geometry. And this is a good question, okay. But uh, the question is how you can uh, phrase uh, this question, uh, where how you can use uh, like a uh, polyhedral, uh, uh, polyhedral techniques in constructing, in doing some calculations, getting some classes, and so on. And this is a topic uh, which has been. I mean, I, I've been thinking about this with uh, some some uh, colleagues, but uh, it's not yet. Uh, there, there are not concrete results yet, so I cannot tell you uh, how much you can use uh, theoretical geometry in these kind of uh, calculations. Oh. But uh, but there is another part of the the the, the char ring which is called the tautological ring, and the tautological ring uh, this is more computable because it it, it is given it is given by I mean, you know exactly what are the tautological classes. So the question is about the the, the relations between these classes, and uh, specifically there is a one critical dimension in which uh, the, people don't know if. Uh, they, they, sh they should expect to have Poincaré duality or not. And uh, you, it, co it corresponds to, ch to checking if a relation is actually a relation or it's not, a, it's an element. I mean, you have some expressions in, in terms of uh, tautological uh, classes and you want to see that this, if this is a relation or if this is not a relation. If it is not a relation, then uh, the, the Poincaré doesn't hold, the Poincaré duality doesn't hold. If it is a relation, Poincaré duality holds. And specifically for that one, maybe you can use a uh, tropical geometry because these geological classes somehow admit, uh, should admit uh, some uh, tropical. Uh, Continuation to uh, that. So, so there are some cohomological relation uh, uh, on the MGN in the classical setup. So for example, in genus one, Gessler has, has a cohomological relation in H4. So are there uh, anal analogous results in uh, tropical geometry as well? You mean for uh, the cohomology of uh, the analogs of this, uh, this moduli spaces in tropical geometry? So the, the point is that the in, you can define uh, tropical moduli spaces. Okay, you can define MG and trop. Uh, for sure, I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no problem. But this is, this, is a, but this is not an embedded fan. So everything I, I explained, these charms and so on, you use in order in order to define these cohomology classes. You use the global uh, 
the global geometry of the fan. So, and this is captured in the embedding of the fan inside this ambient space Rn because you need to have a integral uh, fun in linear functions or integral linear functions. And you, as you saw, we needed to have, uh, because the, one of the relations was given by uh, linear functions. In the fourth lecture, I explained how to, you can associate these sheaves, this sheaf, the sheaf of uh, holomorphic uh, forms, tropical holomorphic forms and these kind of things. And using those tropical holomorphic forms, you can define cohomology. Uh, but to, to, to introduce uh, those uh, tropical holomorphic forms, you also need to know what is the linearity of uh, the, the, the space of linear functions around each cone of the, of the fan. And in the case when you have an embedding inside Rn, this is given by the, the linear functions which are, uh, which are inside the full space. So for the moduli space of tropical curves, you don't have, uh, you don't see what are the linear functions, what is the sheaf of linear functions. And I think this is the, this is the main ob obstacle for now to, to, to introduce tropical uh, cohomological techniques in, uh, in approaching those questions. So one of the possibilities is to use some embeddings of these, uh, these tropical uh, moduli spacesets into, into some uh, linear spaces and then take uh, the restriction of those linear functions. And so there are some actually, so there's one which is obtained by, uh, by so it's, it's, it's an infinite dimensional linear space, there's an embedding. And but uh, but it's a yeah I mean maybe there is uh, maybe there is something to, to be done in that direction so there is this moduli space uh, which is defined by cooler uh, uh, workman which is uh, which uses these outer spaces and so on and in that context you see that there is that there is an embedding which shows up uh, <laughs> inside some inf but it is it's inside in, in an infinite dimensional space. But there might be a possibility to use uh, that that the, the, the embed that that uh, that those constructions and to define a shift of linear forms, the shifts of linear forms. Uh, on, and if this is the case, then you can define some this you can define the analogs of charring and so on. So, but I don't know how they are related to this to the to the actual at least the tautological parts of the charring of the, the modular space. But I think this is a very good question. This is absolutely. Uh, the question I think that people <laughs> should uh, look at. Yeah. Uh, thank, yeah. thank you. Thank, thank you, you so for much. Coming. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, final comments, questions? Okay. Then, yeah, let's thank Omid again for his wonderful series of lectures. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So, we'll, we'll, we'll get in touch as, uh, when we. Uh, when we have our uh, questions and when we have read through this next week. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Omid. Okay. So for me, I mean, uh, in, uh, oh. like at the same timing, uh, if you, if there's a day which is free, you don't have a very yeah. dense program in the, at the same timing for me, this eight, uh, at, starting at eight, eight Paris time, or it's, it's, I think 1130 your time. Okay. Yeah. Would be a good time. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot for yeah letting us know. Yeah. Take care. Okay, so enjoy, enjoy. It's a, it's a fantastic uh, program. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, thank you. Uh, thank you. Hopefully, I see you in person. Uh, yeah, see you. See in you in the future. Yes. yes. Take care. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.